book review. Book review time. I'll start with David Hawks, The Colonial Experience. Good. Uh, 700 pages. It's a big one. Weighty. But uh, just like the next one I read, uh, The New World, or A New World, Arthur Quinn. Yeah, these two are good to start with. Because they start with Britain and France, uh, colonialism in the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, before America, uh, and early colonial history, but all the, uh, all the things that are happening, including uh, many bad things and massacres and uh, people, very greedy people, um, and that was happening before America. It was the British and the French uh, that were controlling the area, basically, and the Native Americans that were controlling certain areas and losing a lot of uh, their areas because of the numbers and weaponry that went in the Europeans' favor. And also the idea of uh, conquering and taking land which was foremost on the British, even more than the French. I believe the natives got along with the French more because they wanted to trade as much as anything, not really uh, colonize, but the British, uh, for lots of different reasons, uh, colonized with human beings, partly because of many poor people in the British uh, Empire in England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, and uh, trying to find land, trying to find a better life. I believe over half were indentured servants. Uh, so basically slaves for five years usually, and you could be sold to somebody else. Your services could be sold to somebody else. So lots of poor people uh, and slavery starting around 1620, I forget, Jamestown was 1608. Um, anyway, those two are great books. Uh, if you want to start, I taught American history, but we really should have started in the 1500s and 1600s and laid the foundation of what was to come, and that was through the French and the British, and them fighting each other and fighting with and against the Native Americans and, uh, for hundreds of years before we got here, before America became America. Um, you know, I think you should uh, follow your interests and not, not be afraid to go in different new areas. And some of the newer areas I'm in is I'm reading Oh my goodness, uh, a number of books at once, which I've never done, but that's okay. I have a lot of good books on, basically, at this point, um, about the Constitution, some about colonialism before that, but uh, I think I've read up to um, about 1787, where the Constitutional Convention happened, and so that's what I'm interested in, that's what I'm reading. I really like Joseph Ellis, Founding Brothers. I believe this is a Pulitzer Prize winner. And I don't think that always means it's the best book. Uh, would I say this is a better book? The Colonial, maybe. Yeah. And Joseph Ellis, who I really like, a better book uh, that I've loaned out is uh, George Washington, His Excellency. I recommend that. And he's more around 300 pages. So it's not quite as, and this is less than that. It's not quite as uh, a, a real bite to chew and that will take you, you know, twice as long or more. But Founding Brothers, Joseph Ellis, I, like I say, George Washington, His Excellency. Um, I'm sure I have another Ellis somewhere. Oh, well. This is an interesting one. The summer of 18 or 1787. Oh, I would also say. Uh, 1776, David McCullough. That's good. That's good. 
I know a historian that doesn't really like McCullough because he doesn't think he's a historian. He thinks he is a, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, historical fiction, where he takes liberties and saying what people are thinking. Uh, and a, a lot of these people do. Um, but anyway, I thought that was a very good book and interesting, 1776, just about that year. That's interesting. Here's just about another year, uh, the summer of 1787. Constitution was written. Uh, David Stewart was a lawyer, I believe, and he was involved in a case in front of the Supreme Court, and he thought one of his opponents said something that was wrong about the Constitution. And he ended up looking it up and deciding, well, no, he was right, you know. My idea was wrong. So he decided to um, teach himself about the Constitution and wrote a book, and it's pretty good. I haven't read I don't know, that, not that much, but I, I like it. I like most of these books. Plain Honest Men, The American Con the Making of the American Constitution. Um, I like this. Uh, and, yeah, that's where I'm at. And I could just read one all the way through. It'd take me a while. I don't read that fast or that much a day. But I'm just thinking, why, why not? Uh, witnesses at the creation. Who is this? Richard Morris? Hamilton, Madison, Jay, and the Constitution. It's funny, you know, this guy focuses on Hamilton, Madison, and Jay, and the Constitution. Now, that's the Federalist Papers uh, by Publius. Uh, that's who wrote it. Hamilton wrote the most. What did he write? 57. Madison writes 27. Jay writes 6, something like that. But they decide they have to sell the Constitution. So uh, after the Constitution Convention, they they uh, print all these or have printed all these essays on why this is a good thing. Now Washington would say uh, some people would say he was a speculator. He loved land. Uh, he was acquisitive. You know, he liked wealth. He liked uh, dressing fancy. He had a lot of land, and a lot of the big landowners wanted a centralized government to protect their land interests, which uh, is what some historians uh, will say. Um, uh, oh, Gore Vidal, Inventing a Nation. Uh, I like Gore Vidal's essays, not, not his fiction so much. Uh, he probably takes liberties, I'm sure. Uh, he's very uh, flowery language, language or... A lot of uh, character in the people, whether it's true or not. But so what does she talk about? Washington, Adams, and Jefferson. So what I like about these is they different different people emphasize different uh, founding fathers. Founding fathers. Gordon Wood, I guess one of the best uh, historical writers. Revolutionary characters. So he's just talking about a bunch of different individuals from Jefferson to Madison, of course you have to have Madison. And some people have said he wasn't the father of the Constitution. He was the father that helped uh, get the Constitution Convention. He was the father of the Constitution Convention, getting everybody together. But he also did a lot of uh, reading and a brilliant man uh, with his own issues. All these guys have issues, which is interesting to read. Uh, nobody's uh, a heroic angel. Um, one thing I read when I was a teacher I believe this is true, and it might have been from uh, Jefferson when I've read these other books. Uh, Madison read a hundred books before he went to the Constitution Convention. He wanted to know about different governments throughout history and different republics throughout history, what worked, what didn't work. But to read a hundred books before you show up. And he, the Virginia Plan, which was a big part of what became the Constitution, uh, Madison from Virginia, Jefferson from Virginia, Washington from Virginia, you know, the uh, Revolutionary War may have been centered in Boston, or it started really in Boston, and a lot of fighting happened in New York. I think most of the uh, fatalities happened in New York. But uh, uh, anyway, it's an it's, uh, interesting story in Philadelphia. So you got Pennsylvania, Virginia, New York, and Boston, you know, different areas, and they're proud of their heritage. This is a very good book, Miracle at Philadelphia. 
Um, it's only won by a woman, Catherine Drinker Bowen. And I looked her up a little bit, tried to read about her and just an interesting lady. Um, but you can tell very intelligent and uh, not a historian, but it doesn't matter if you write well and research well, and she does. So yeah, um, I, I would recommend this for sure. Maybe Plain Honest Men. I really like the summer of 1870, uh, 1787. Founding Brothers, probably. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of a, of a good writer. You know, I, I don't think I'll ever write a book like the, these guys have. Uh, so I, I look up to them. This is a little different. This is uh, more current. The Unwinding, George Packer. The Unwinding of the American Dream, which... Uh, it's basically about the working people uh, losing out to the rich um, through different things, including uh, the Republican idea of cutting taxes on the rich and cutting programs for the poor and not really worrying about equality. Reagan in 1980, the uh, trickle-down effect, the trickle-down economics, cut taxes to the rich, they'll create things for the poor. And so we've had a grotesque... Uh, growth and in inequality uh, since 1980, and the Supreme Court has helped promote that in the past decade or so. So now you can spend almost uh, whatever you want on an election, which will create uh, candidates and eventually uh, politicians, lawmakers that were bought and sold by very wealthy people who aren't really too interested in humanity, or America, actually. More mammon and avarice. The Federalist Papers, like I said, Hamilton, Madison, Jay. I uh, had a friend give me this, and uh, the, the, uh, the type was so small, I had to give it back to him, and I ordered one big, in big print because I'm older and I need it. Uh, this is supposed to be these are really important years, 1776 to 87. Um, and after we got independence, as we like to call it, we had no money. We owed money. Uh, 13 states were not united. Didn't really care about each other as much as I'm a Virginia man. I am a Massachusetts man. There was no America. And it was falling apart. And uh, what do you had? Shays Rebellion. Uh, you had different uh, rebellions because many of the soldiers and officers that fought in the Revolutionary War were not paid, or they were paid in uh, worthless continentals, uh, which they couldn't buy anything with. So the paper money was worthless. Every state was printing their own money. One reason Rhode Island didn't go to the Constitution Convention is because they didn't want to do away with their own paper money. But these people that, you know, we, we like to have said, oh, we're so proud of the soldiers. We're so proud of those that fought and freed us from British bondage. But uh, they were owed money. And they weren't paid and they were in rags and they had no shoes and the blood in the snow of Valley Forge. So it's easy to say I believe in these people. But uh, when it comes down to we need you to pay taxes so we can help pay for what they need and pay them for what they've done. Wasn't happening, wasn't happening. So the, many of them were losing their land and going into debtor's prison uh, and the interest on their debts, it was just uh, terrible. The situation, um, unconscionable. Um, I wanna say un-American, inhumane, inhumane. Notes on the federal convention. So this is by Madison who took uh, some of the best notes. And yeah, I, I don't want, I would rather have some really smart historian go through it with me or in the book, you know, uh, try to explain what he meant on what was happening on June the 8th or June the 10th or, uh, but I'll see if this is, if I, I can get through this. I've read a little bit and, you know, for something that was written 250 years ago, you can understand what Madison's saying most of the time, uh, but I wouldn't, I don't mind 
I, I want to try trust uh, an expert because I am not. Uh, is that all? I think that's all. Um, and again, 1781, we win the war. Uh, although the British didn't leave a lot of places in America. Um, they left the coastline, I guess, but many things continue to happen because they knew they could push us around. Everybody knew we had nothing. We had no real government. The Articles Confederation didn't make a real government. And that is why so many uh, soldiers were without shoes and clothes. And so many died at Valley Forge and other places. So they could push us around. But 1781, after the war was over, I forget when Articles of Confederation came into being, um, but as I said, that was a confederation. It was 13 states. It was not a union. So uh, first to win the independence, very important, but more important to create the United States, to create the Constitution, to create America. Uh, what was a bigger accomplishment? I don't know. I think they, they are one in a way, one ac accomplishment. Many of the same characters are involved in both. Um, but it continues. And I think many of the founding fathers would look at us and shake their head and go, you know, you guys need to do more instead of always coming back to us. You know, uh, the Supreme Court talks about original intent, but these guys were using muskets and rifles that you would uh, maybe get off two shots in a minute or three shots in a minute. Now we're dealing with assault rifles that create so much carnage and all the uh, terrible violence that we've seen around America, uh, partly due but due to uh, our lack of of contemporary government. Um, we depend on so much of the Constitution, so we don't have to get involved in in contemporary issues and policies that they had no idea. They had no idea what global warming was or how we can deal with it or how we can try to rectify our destruction of our own home and stop it from uh, burning up and becoming a desert and all these fires and the ice melting and many of the cities on the coastlines uh, flooding. Um, they didn't know what to do with that. And if the Supreme Court which is very conservative Republican, you know, says, well, you're, you know, you don't have the right to make states do that. You know, this is, we have more freedom here and not these, all these laws. So this is a, a Supreme Court that is creating more turmoil uh, because of the planet and less restrictions on how we can deal with uh, our problems, whether that's a grotesque inequality, uh, the growth of luxury and poverty and the collapse of a healthy, thriving middle class, as well as uh, dealing with a, a planet that is in crisis. Uh, I believe, was it Ju July, the hottest month in 120,000 years, something like that. And... Uh, it's real. The changes are real. This is 2023. That's real. It's not 18, 17, uh, 1787. That's real. Uh, so we have to kind of grow up and be more philosophers, citizens, good people, involved, engaged. You can't say I'm not political. This is a democracy. Uh, if you want to go where there's a dictator, you don't have to be political there. And you can't be. But here, you have to be. Over and out.